A military transport aircraft soared above Maoxian city and is patiently waiting for the clouds to break. On board is Captain Li Junbo, and he is making a critical decision. That is when he and his 14 crew members would jump out of the plane. Captain Li was 48 years old, and it has been six years since his last mission. He was called back in in an emergency, and he doesn't know if he can come out of this alive. Every one of them have written down their last words, and they are prepared to die. Suddenly, the thick layers of clouds parted, revealing a glimpse of the world below for the first time in two days. Everything was destroyed. Houses were collapsed, and beneath them are a hundred thousand people trapped. Without any hesitation, the 15 soldiers plunged from an altitude of 5,000 meters. They free fell for over a thousand meters they had no ground markers to guide them, they didn't know where they were landing, they didn't know how the weather might change, and the only thing they could rely on is their instincts. The parachute opened just in time, and thankfully, only Captain Lee and one other soldier suffered from minor injuries. The rest touched down safely. In 2008, China was hit with the deadliest earthquake in decades. It was eight in magnitude, nearly 69,000 lives were tragically lost, the earthquake happened in Sichuan province, a region with an average altitude of about 2,700 meters. There were towering mountains to the north and torrential rains to the south. Maoxian city is 40 kilometers away from the epicenter, Wenchuan. Water supply, electricity, roads and communication signals were all cut off. It became an island and lost connection to the outside world. Life is ticking away, and parachuting was the only way to send help. And that was how desperate it was. Fast forward to today, 15 years later, another major earthquake struck China, this time in Gansu province. But this time, Captain Li's successors did not have to risk their lives by jumping from 5,000 meters height. At 11.59pm on December 18, 2023, a 6.2 magnitude earthquake hit Jishishan County. Tragically, the earthquake resulted in at least 135 deaths, hundreds wounded, and thousands in need of relocation in the cold that is minus 15 degrees Celsius. This time, instead of relying on parachuting, Wing Long to its drones was enlisted for the detection task of disaster relief. Its cameras detected partially collapsed homes and buildings, damaged infrastructures and fallen power lines in high-definition footage and revealed vital clues in the aftermath. These real-time images are passed on directly to command centers to ensure maximum support for frontline rescue operations and aid distributions. But that's not all, the Winglong 2H also is an aerial communications hub. It worked to restore mobile network for a 50 square kilometer area so people in need can call for assistance. For two days straight, the drone surveyed the county, accumulating over 20 hours of valuable data. It overcomes two challenges. One, it can go where rescue workers cannot physically access, and two, it allows information to flow from impacted areas. These drones also communicated closely with the satellites. As soon as the tremors were felt, the country's remote sensing satellites started to snap aerial images of the quake zone. The detailed pictures revealed damage across wide stretches of terrain in stunning clarity. You could make out collapsed buildings, landslides that cut up roads, and lakes dammed by rubble. This initial assessment from above helped the response team to understand the full scale of devastation on the ground. But more were needed. The Ministry of Emergency Management activated a special emergency protocol involving China's leading space agencies and companies. Over a dozen civilian and commercial satellites were enlisted for the immediate task of imaging the affected areas. Golfing, Environment, Jiling, and other optical satellites shifted their orbit to photograph the disaster screen from multiple angles and high resolution. One such satellite, Golfin 1B, continued to hoover overhead. The images it produced are updated regularly, allowing authorities to monitor secondary impacts as the recovery unfolds. Landslides remain a threat as wet season sets in, so the satellite sentinels keep careful watch from the skies. Within hours, Y-20 took flight from an airbase howling the Western Theater Command's frontline coordinators, along with 14 tons of vehicles and supplies. 
In the aftermath of this devastating earthquake, relief workers faced the challenging task of providing aid in remote areas impacted by the disaster. With infrastructure damage and darkness falling, how can they ensure the safety and welfare of the survivors? Conventional floodlights are bulky and use a lot of power. They are also difficult to transport across wrecked roads. But the multi-rotor drones can fly freely, dispersing bright LED beams across entire settlement points from above. These searchlight-equipped drones hovered overhead like man-made stars. Dozens have been deployed to illuminate temporary tent cities. They are powered by generators on the ground. A single drone's battery lasts over eight hours, illuminating an area the size of two football fields. Even in harsh conditions, their powerful light stays on. With darkness no longer being an obstacle, recovery efforts can continue at night. Just a day after, it was announced that traffic was restored and electricity came back on for the worst-hit regions. This initial progress enabled more conventional assistance to press deeper towards the settlement that was cut off by debris. The focus of relief work was then shifted from urgent rescue to treatment and resettlement of survivors. With transport re-established, mobile hospitals and canteens rotated through makeshift camps. It is clear that the high-tech edge improved response time and effectiveness despite the deadly disaster. The earthquake has brought immense hardship to the people of Gansu and Qinghai provinces, but the collective resilience and determined efforts from the rescue team and support organizations offered a glimmer of hope in the face of adversity. And that is all for this year's Threshold. We will see you in 2024.